Asynchronous Serial Interface is a widely used serial interface standard for industrial applications between a master and a slave. SSI is based on RS-422 standards and has a high protocol efficiency in addition to its implementation over various hardware platforms, making it very popular among sensor manufacturers. SSI was originally developed by Max Stegman GmbH in 1984 for transmitting the position data of absolute encoders a euro for this reason, some servo drive equipment manufacturers refer to their SSI port as a Stegman interface. It was formally covered by the German patent DE3445617 which expired in 1990. It is very suitable for applications demanding reliability and robustness in measurements under varying industrial environments. It is different from the serial peripheral interface bus, ASSI's differential, simplex, non-multiplexed, and relies on a timeout to frame the data. ASPI is single-ended, duplex, multiplex and uses a select line to frame the data. However, SPI peripherals on microcontrollers can implement SSI with external differential driver ICs and program controlled timing. Introduction SSI is a synchronous, point-to-point, -point, serial communication channel for digital data transmission. Synchronous data transmission is one in which the data is transmitted by synchronizing the transmission at the receiving and sending ends using a common clock signal. Since start and stop bits are not present, this allows better use of data transmission bandwidth for more message bits and makes the whole transmission process simpler and easier. The clock needs its own bandwidth and should be included when determining the total bandwidth required for communication between the two devices. In general, as mentioned earlier, it is a point-to-point -point connection from a master to a slave. The master controls the clock sequence and the slave transmits the current data value through a shift register. When invoked by the master, the data is clocked out from the shift register. The master and slave are synchronized by the common clock of the controller. The clock and data signals are transmitted according to RS-422 standards. RS-422, also known as ANSI F422B, is a technical standard that specifies the electrical characteristics of the balanced voltage digital interface circuit. Data is transmitted using balanced or differential signaling that is the clock and data lines are basically twisted pair cables. Inputs can use an optocoupler for galvanic isolation that can be driven by RS-422-485 levels. The data output of the sensor is driven by a RS-422-485 line driver. Differential signaling improves the resistance to electromagnetic interference hence making it a reliable communication channel over long transmission lengths and harsh external environments. SSI design, the interface has a very simple design as illustrated in the above figure. It consists of two pairs of wires, one for transmitting the clock signals from the master and the other for transmitting the data from the slave. The clock sequences are triggered by the master when need arises. Different clock frequencies can be used ranging from 100 kHz to 2 MHz and the number of clock pulses depends on the number of data bits to be transmitted. The simplest SSI slave interface uses a retriggerable monostable multivibrator to freeze the current value of the sensor. The current frozen values of the slave are stored in shift registers. These values are clocked out sequentially when initiated by the controller. The design is being revolutionized with the integration of microcontrollers, FPGAs and ASICs into the interface. The data format is designed in such a way to ensure proper communication of data. The protocol for the data transmission is based on three different subsequent parts. The main significance of this type of format is to ensure the proper working of the interface and hence secure data transmission free from any hardware or software errors. In idle state the clock is on high level and also the sensor output is on high level, so that it can be used for detecting any broken wire contacts. This helps in observing the proper working condition of the interface. After end clock pulses the data is completely transmitted. With the next clock pulse the sensor output goes to low level which can be used to detect a short circuit in the cable. If it is high even after N plus 1 rising edges then it means that the interface has a short circuit. 
readings from multiple slaves can be enabled at the same time by connecting them to a common clock. However, to avoid ground loops and electrically isolate the slave, complete galvanic isolation by optocouplers is needed. SSI timing and transmission The following key words will be useful in understanding the SSI data transmission procedure. A euro to my euro unregistered trademark represents the transfer timeout. It is the minimum time required by the slave to realize that the data transmission is complete. After TM, the data line goes to idle and the slave starts updating its data in the shift register. A euro TPA euro unregistered trademark represents the pause time. It is the time delay between two consecutive clock sequences from the master. A euro to a euro unregistered trademark represents the repetition time. It is the minimum time elapsed between retransmissions of the same data and is always less than TM. A euro to a euro unregistered trademark represents the width of each clock cycle. It is the time taken between two falling or two rising edges in a continuous clock sequence. MSB, most significant bit, LSB, least significant bit. Equals single transmission equals. The diagram illustrates the single data transmission using SSI protocol. The SSI is initially in the idle mode, where both the data and clock lines stay high and the slave keeps updating its current data. The transmission mode is evoked when the master initiates a train of clock pulses. Once the slave receives the beginning of the clock signal, it automatically freezes its current data. With the first rising edge of the clock sequence, the MSB of the Sensora Euro unregistered trademark S value is transmitted and with consequent rising edges, the bits are sequentially transmitted to the output. After the transmission of complete data word, an additional rising edge of the clock sets the clock line high. The data line is set to LOW and remains there for a period of time, TM, to recognize the transfer timeout. If a clock signal is received within that time, the same data will be transmitted again. The slave starts updating its value and the data line is set to high if there are no clock pulses within time, TM. This marks the end of single transmission of the data word. Once the slave receives a clock signal at a time, TP, the updated position value is frozen and the transmission of the value begins as described earlier. Equals multiple transmissions equals. Multiple transmissions of the same data happens only if there is continuous clocking even after the transmission of the least significant bit that is the clock pulses does not allow the mono flop to go to steady state. This is illustrated below. The initial sequences are the same as that of the single transmission. In the idle state the clock and data lines are high but with the arrival of the first falling edge the transmission mode is evoked and the similarly the data bits are transmitted sequentially starting with the MSB with every rising edge. The transmission of the LSB means that the transmission of the data is completed. An additional rising edge pushes the data line to LOW signifying the end of transmission of the particular data. But, if there are continuous clock pulses even after then that is the next clock pulses comes in time TW. 